Okay, so in the last video we implemented our reflection amount, which allowed us to specify with either a 0 to 1 value or a texture map the proportion of our final shading that was based on reflections, and obviously the fuse made up the rest of that proportion. That was all by driving this blend cop with the pass that we're outputting as a fuse reflection balance pass. Now we're interested in that pass not only containing that reflection amount that we were able to specify, but also containing information that was driven by Fresnel calculations. So in this video I'd like us to implement those Fresnel calculations and get that output into our pass, and in the next video we'll look at how we can combine the Fresnel calculations back with our reflection amount and have both of those combined together in our pass. So in this video, we're just going to be focusing on the Fresnel calculations. It's actually going to be very easy to implement because of the fact that Houdini already provides us with a Fresnel VOP for working with Mantra, and we already have an instance of a Fresnel VOP in our shader already. So let's jump over into our shader, and let's hunt down our Fresnel VOP. There it is. And I'm going to bring this down near where our reflection amount is. So with the Fresnel VOP, we're taking the angle, the vector that we're looking down, along with the surface normal, and we're using that to work out a reflection vector and a refraction vector based on the index of refraction of the material we're rendering. We're also able to, based on the Fresnel calculations, work out the proportion of light that would be reflected at that viewing angle and the proportion of light that would be refracted at that viewing angle, KR being the reflected proportion and KT being the refracted proportion. Now KR is going to be very useful to us here because it's a 0 to 1 value that tells us how much reflections we'd get based on Fresnel calculations for our given viewing angle. So we could almost think of this as being in a way, the same as our reflection amount. Our reflection amount was a user specified 0 to 1 value. This is a viewing angle specified 0 to 1 value along with the index of refraction taking effect over that value. So we can take this, and since we're not worried about how it combines with reflection amount in this video, we're just worried about Fresnel calculations, and we can directly output that into our diffuse reflection balance pass. So we're going to take whatever the reflections should be based on the Fresnel calculations and simply output that out of our pass. Now we do need to be able to control the index of refraction, eta. So I'm going to middle click on eta and create a parameter node. Just leave this with its defaults. Now it's worth noting that our parameter, eta, has the label index of refraction. Now, whilst it's labeled as index of refraction, it's actually a little more complicated than just being the index of refraction of the material we're rendering. For the Fresnel calculations, eta is actually the ratio of the index of refraction of the material outside over the index of refraction of the material inside the object we're rendering. So we can assume that for a pretty much usual viewing medium, air, which has an index of refraction very close to 1, that we really need to set this eta parameter to 1 divided by the index of refraction for the surface type that we're rendering. For example, if we were rendering plastic or glass that has an index of refraction of 1.5, we wouldn't set eta to 1.5. We'd set it to 1 divided by 1.5, which gives us a value of 0.6666 recurring. Uh, let's say we were doing water, which has an index of refraction of around 1.33. That would actually need to give us a value of 1 divided by 1.33. It's around 0.752 that we'd specify for eta. We wouldn't put 1.33 in eta. We'd put 1 divided by 1.33 into eta. So hopefully that's clear. We're not dealing with the true index of refraction of the material we're rendering. We're dealing with a ratio of the index of refraction outside the material with the index of refraction inside the material. So I want to go ahead and promote this up to our asset. Once that's promoted to our asset, we can do some test renders and take a look at how changing the index of refraction, changing eta, affects the fall off of our reflections. So I'm going to bring up the type properties for our asset and from nodes I want to promote up our index of refraction into the reflections folder and I want this to be underneath all of our reflection amount parameters but separated from them. So I'm going to create a separator above that and we can accept and if I bring up the parameters for our material there is now our index of refraction. Fantastic. So let's jump over to the output context and I'm also going to grab a copy of the parameters for our mantra. So 
There's a copy of our parameters for Mantra 1, which is going to allow us to quickly render. So I'm going to fire off a render, and whilst that's rendering, let's jump over to our composite view and over to our composite view. And I'll bring up a task manager just to see if Mantra is still running. It looks like it finished in that time. Fantastic. And what we should see, if I was to grab this, reload, and take a look, there we go. We can now see that whereas before we just had a solid red color or a red color texture based on whether we were using a constant color or a texture in our channel, what we're now getting is our red channel being driven by the Fresnel calculations. And what we should see is that we're getting a dark value, a value close to zero when we're looking straight on, but towards glancing angles, we're getting a lighter value, a value closer to one. And that is because the index of refraction we've specified along with the Fresnel calculations are giving us this fairly tight fall off where at glancing angles, we have much stronger reflections than we do at face on. And that, if we look at our blend, is going to give us an object that looks very plastic-like. Now, obviously, a index of refraction of 0.8 is not the value that we'd need for plastic. We already said for plastic we need 1 over 1.5, around 0.66667. So we're not going to see something that looks perfectly like plastic, but it's kind of looking like plastic because it's relying on Fresnel calculations, and plastic does have reflections that are stronger at glancing angles than it does when we're looking at it straight on. So let's go ahead and actually start working with this index of refraction. So what if we wanted to simulate, I don't know, plastic, so 0.66667, say, and we could re-render. And there's Mantra, just wait for Mantra to render. And we're not going to see a huge difference between 0.8 and 0.6667. In fact, it may be quite hard to see any difference, but there's what it was before, reload, we can see it's just very slightly manipulated the fall off, but it's enough of a change that if we look at the end result, I believe personally this does look closer to plastic than we had previously. We could go ahead and we could set this for water and re-render, so 0.752 and render. So there's Mantra, let's wait for this to finish rendering, there we go. This is what we had with water, with plastic rather, and this is what we get with water. And again, looking through the end result. Now, obviously, we're looking at a teapot. We're not looking at something that's representing water, so it's not really going to look like water. But if you used a shader like this on a surface that was displaced or bump mapped for water, and you had the diffuse surface color and the uh, reflection surface color set for water, you could get a fairly nice water texture, water shader by using Fresnel calculations to fall off uh, uh, various reflections. And you could get an even nicer water shader if you then started actually implementing refraction. But that's getting way out of the scope of what we're dealing with here. So that's a look at some sort of sensible values. But we could come in and we could set this very low. We could set this to, say, a value of 0.2 and re-render. And hopefully this will help to make apparent what's actually happening in terms of how we're falling off our reflections. So Mantra has finished. So if we jump back over. So this is what we were getting with a higher value. Notice with a lower value, our reflections are not being attenuated anywhere near as much as they were before. We are still getting a stronger reflection at glancing angles than we are straight on. But whereas before we were getting no reflections here, we are now getting some reflections here. And you can see that does have quite a large impact on the end result. So it's basically like, we can think of it like controlling the fall off of our reflections. Now obviously the index of refraction values that are true for the material we're trying to represent, they'll get you close. But uh, I'd recommend, obviously, always going back to your reference. What is it we're trying to match? You should have photographic reference, hopefully, of something similar, if not the object that you're trying to match. And that will allow you to tweak those values and get them to an area that you're happy with so that they're working for what you need. Obviously, just because a science book tells you that you need a particular value, that doesn't necessarily mean that the visual result that we're getting back is going to work perfectly for our needs. But I'm quite happy with how this is behaving. I'm going to set this back to 0.6667 so we have something kind of like plastic. And with that set, let's render one last time. And then we can go ahead, reload everything into our compositing network, and that will conclude this video. And in the next video, we'll look at how we can combine 
a Fresnel based uh, but for an L-based reflection attenuation, if you will, with our ability to specify a reflection amount via a value or a texture, and we'll look at how we can combine those into a single pass so that we can complete our diffuse reflection balance pass. But with that, that is going to conclude this video taking a look at the Fresnel calculations. Thanks a lot, everyone.